But first, with pharmacists consistently coming near the top of professions that people most trust, I reckon it's a brave government that takes them on. On budget night, the Albanese government announced what seemed like a good idea at the time, giving people on regular medication the ability to get two months supply on just one script. Now, what could possibly go wrong? It saved people that extra trip to the doctor and the extra trip to the pharmacist, and it meant six PBS co-payments rather than 12. Except that as far as the government was concerned, it wasn't really about greater convenience and savings for patients. It was about saving the government money and ripping off pharmacists to do it. That's because under the PBS, every time a pharmacist fills a prescription, there's a dispensing fee from the government. So by dropping from 12 down to six scripts per year for common drugs, the government estimated a net saving of $1.2 billion over the next four years, but with a cut to pharmacy of more than $3.5 billion, and even the government's own estimates fessing up that each pharmacy on average would lose $158,000 a year. Now, for a small pharmacy, especially in a country town, this could be the difference between staying open and closing down. Hence the campaign run out of each of our 6,000 pharmacies across the country for the government to think again. And given the trust we all have in our pharmacists, well, this campaign is starting to bite. With reports today that government backbenchers are increasingly on edge, even to the point of an out-and-out -out revolt by some who don't think the Health Minister, Mark Butler, has really thought this through and they want action. Now, given Labor's Stalinist internal discipline, it takes a lot for Labor MPs to break ranks, but today, two have done that and they've gone on the record. The veteran Tasmanian Labor Senator Helen Polly said, we don't want any pharmacists to close down, and called for an open dialogue, she said, with the Pharmacy Guild. And the MacArthur MP, the well-respected paediatrician, Dr Mike Freelander, well, he said that pharmacists should be adequately compensated for any government change, as they should. Now, this could have been a good policy, but only if it had been done in cooperation with the people needed to make it work, namely the pharmacists themselves. The fact that the government still hasn't done the modelling on a policy it announced about two months ago now shows that this really is amateur hour stuff. Now, my advice to the government, back down quick, admit you've got it wrong and fix it before it's too late.